Okay, so um, let's start. Um, first of all, um, hello and welcome uh, to the session Pretty Up My SharePoint um, at Teams Nation. Um, I will hurry up because I have a lot of uh, interesting topics and uh, yeah, uh, we don't have so much time, but I will try to, um, to talk about um, the most important things. Before we start, um, first let me introduce myself. Uh, my name is Corinna Linz. I'm working as a modern workplace consultant at MSG Services in Germany. You can see it also in the pictures. So um, that's Munich. Um, on the, the top picture is the Munich city center and typical Bavarian food. So that's where I'm coming from. Um, it's the Weissbier and Weisswurst and the Oktoberfest, which hopefully um, yeah, is known everywhere in the world and hopefully it will take place um, next year because this year is cancelled. OK, back uh, to, um, to my topics. Um, I'm working in the consulting area for more than 80 years for now. And yeah, I started with uh, SharePoint, like uh, many of uh, the consultants in this area, and um, moved to Microsoft 365 topics in the last years. Um, when I still have time, I'm also organizing some community events. So I'm organ I'm co-organizer of the Collab Days Munich. Um, so it's part of the Collab Days series. Um, I'm doing this together with other two other great uh, people from the community, and I'm also um, organizing the collaboration meetup uh, Munich, which now takes place online. And uh, this one is in German. So sorry for um, those of you who want to attend and uh, yeah, don't know German. OK, now, la now let's um, go to the today's topics. So everyone is talking about user adoption. But yeah, what if your SharePoint sites are unattractive? So if your SharePoint sites are not really nice, um, like this um, sweet um, <laughs> baby bird, um, people will not use it. That's why it's important also to think about um, SharePoint size, how to make them look nice and how to pretty them up. And that's what we're talking today. So first of all, we want to take a look on how it all began with uh, SharePoint. And after that, we will uh, take a deep dive in UI customizations and uh, design in modern SharePoint sites. Um, after that, I want to give you some quick tips um, how, on how making modern sites look pretty. And at the end of the session, I also want to uh, give you some tips on useful tools and applications. OK, let's see how it all began. Um, so it started with the SharePoint server version. So um, the first version of SharePoint was SharePoint 2001. And yeah, now we're already at SharePoint 2019 in the server version. And uh, SharePoint Online was uh, for the first time available in 2012. So then uh, Microsoft started with the Office 365 services. Yeah, and um, now, so today we're working uh, with modern sites in SharePoint Online, and we also have this modern sites in SharePoint 2019. So when we talk about um, pretty up um, the, yeah, the modern sites in SharePoint, in SharePoint 2019, there are still some functionalities that are not available, like uh, some web parts or some uh, designs for spe specific web parts. Um, yeah, but um, in SharePoint Online, we have a lot of options. And today we will also focus on SharePoint Online, because, SharePoint Online because we have much more than in SharePoint on-premises. And also in the user interface, um, there are a lot of changes. So in SharePoint 2001, yeah, it was looking like a website in 2001 um, and it moved very fast. So um, I've been working a lot with SharePoint 2007, 2010 and 2013. And um, the move from SharePoint uh, 2007, 2010 to 13 was not so big. So there was always an small enhancement it was yeah a little bit better but um the enhancement and the really um yeah the really big improvement improvement was with um the modern sites in sharepoint online and now um yeah you can see it also how it looks today 
it looks totally different and um, yeah you can do a lot of fancy things in customizing uh, SharePoint sites um, yeah and um, you have in in the modern sites in SharePoint um, maybe you already know it that but just as, as a short reminder we have two types of sites um, we have in when we talk about modern sites in SharePoint we have team sites and we have communication sites. Both of them are fully responsive, so you can also use them on the phone, on mobile devices. But um, there is a big difference between two, these two types. Because on team sites, like the name says, the focus is on teamwork and collaboration. And you can recognize it also in the UI, because a team site doesn't have a top navigation. It only has a left navigation. Um, and a team site can be connected to a, to a Office 365 group. Um, for example, we will talk later also a little bit about Teams. Um, when you create a team in Microsoft Teams, it's associated to a team site and it's never associated to a communication site. Um, so the communication site, the focus on a communication site is to broadcast content to many users. In the UI, you don't have a left navigation, you have a top navigation, um, and it's not connected to an Office 365 group. So that's the big difference. Okay, so um, now let's um, let's take a look. So this is a, a, a screenshot with the main um, UI elements in um, SharePoint Online. So we will also take a look um, directly in SharePoint Online. Um, in the top area, you always have the Office 365 bar. And this one is available for all Office 365 or Microsoft 365 applications. And after the bar, um, everything is uh, SharePoint related. So we have a hub navigation and we can customize the hub navigation. If you use it, we can change the color, the appearance. Um, then we have a header area in the page. Um, that also is customizable in the color, in the layout. We have the site logo here and we also have a navigation. And after that, uh, we have the content of the page. Um, so here, that's the content area. And in the content area, we are working with um, sections. So you can define sections and it's in the sections, you have the web parts. The web parts are the elements that you place in a SharePoint page. Um, and um, in the communication sites, we also have the footer area. By the way, this one is a communication site because it doesn't have a left navigation. That's how we recognize it very easy. But now let's take a look in um, SharePoint Online. So this now is um, also a communication site. And um, so it's um, yeah, it's a portal um, with um, learning stuff. It's also a template that I've used from the SharePoint lookbook. I will also come back later to the SharePoint lookbook and uh, talk a little bit about it. Um, yeah, and on this side, so if you start customizing the UI, first of all, um, the Office 365 bar, like I've said, so it's um, it's for all applications. So if it if you define it with a gray color, then it's gray. If you define it blue, then it's everywhere blue. Um, then also very important is the theme. So you have a theme for the whole site. In my case now, the th color theme is uh, purple. Um, you can see it also here in the top. So everywhere where you see the purple color. And if you want to change um, this, you can do it um, in the settings um, in the change the look. So here we have different um, topics where we can change the look and the theme is the first one. So here I have now the current selection. I've also created my own theme because you have here, you can see it here, SharePoint themes. You have some predefined themes um, from Microsoft. You can use them if you want. You can also see the preview, but you can also define your own ones. I will also come um, to this topic, how to define your own themes. 
So I've just uh, created a new one, Teams Nation 2021. So if I select it, it's a little bit ugly because I'm using um, yeah green and I think also purple. Um, and now I can um, save the theme and then I have the theme applied for the whole site. So it's just for this site. In the SharePoint environment, I will have many sites, not only one. So this is the Microsoft Learning site and I will have many others. And I am able also to, um, to change the theme for every site. But probably you don't want to do it for every site one by one. Um, we will see it later that you have the option to just uh, define it for a group of sites. Um, the, so the look and the theme. Let's see what else we have here. So we have the header area and in, in the header area you can also change the layout. I'm, I like to use this minimal layout because you just have a navigation here. Um, the, the contrast So this one is the extended layout. So you have here a lot of um, yeah, place. So it takes a lot of place and that's the standard one or the compact one depending um, on how much place you want a uh, space you want to invest for the navigation. You can also change the background colors, but only your theme colors. So you have defined your theme palette. Um, you see, we see later um, and then you can use the colors from your theme palette. Um, and if you want, you can also show the site title. Um, so that's the header part. Let's save it and go back and see what else we can do here. Um, we can also change the navigation style. This one is easy because we have only two options. Either we have a cascading menu, it looks like this, or we have a mega menu and it looks like this. So the mega menu makes sense if you have um, many items in the menu and you could also think about just having one heading that opens a big mega menu. So just having one um, item here in the top navigation. OK, um, then we also have the footer area. This one is for communication sites. Um, so now it's not enabled. I can enable it. Then you can see it here in the bottom area and you can also customize it. OK, that's um, yeah, what you can do, um, what six things you can do that apply for the whole site. And then, um, like I've said, you have um, you have here the navigation, and from here it starts with the content. And it's also super easy. So you can just edit the page, and you're already in the edit mode. And then you have here the sections, where you can work with the sections, and in the sections you can add web parts. So that's really easy and intuitive. OK, let's go uh, back to the slides because I still have um, a couple of things. Um, so now we've talked about SharePoint, but now when the question comes up, what should we use Microsoft Teams or SharePoint? What's better for us? So I think it's not an or, it's an and because SharePoint and Microsoft Teams, SharePoint loves Microsoft Teams. Why? Because when you create a theme in Microsoft Teams, um, there will be automatically a SharePoint site created. And by default, the, teams, no, the team uses the SharePoint site to store the documents. But you can go in this SharePoint site, customize it and integrate it in your team or everyone else or share it with the whole company. Um, and also, if you think about um, advanced permission management. So if you're in a team and you want to um, make a folder read only, um, you have to do it in the SharePoint site. You cannot do it in, the, in Teams yet. And um, so last year, Microsoft Lists was announced as a yeah, super cool um, new feature in Microsoft 365. It is really super cool, but in fact, uh, the Microsoft Lists are SharePoint Lists. So um, for the one of you who already worked with SharePoint list, you probably know that it's, yeah, the Microsoft list is a SharePoint list. And that's why we always have also this connection between Teams and SharePoint. 
you can see it also in the architecture. I don't want to go deep dive into the architecture of teams, but um, we can see it here. So when we create a team um, in Microsoft Teams, um, we automatically create a SharePoint team site. So that one with the left navigation and not with the top navigation. Um, yeah, so that's what I just wanted to um, tell you about SharePoint and Teams. So it's an and and not an or. OK, um, so now let's, uh, let me give you some quick tips for making uh, modern SharePoint sites prettier. I've just talked about the themes. Um, so I've created um, the new theme, the Teams Nation theme that I've just applied. And uh, you can do this with the theme designer. So let me also show it to you because it's easier. So we apply the theme here and um, it's also super easy to do it. So it's the theme designer. It's a website, it's a Microsoft website. And here you can define your theme. So you will have your um, specific color codes and your corporate identity. And here uh, you can just um, create this theme. So you can add the hex code or you can also select a color. Um, then you have the primary color, you have the text color. Most of the time the text color is maybe something gray and you have a background color. So you could also choose this background color. Doesn't make sense, but you could do it. Um, and you can also have you can also see here that it's an accessibility checker that uh, is telling you that OK, you have some accessibility errors. Um, if you take a look here in the semantic slots, um, you can also see how the colors look like and you can make some improvements on the accessibility. <laughs> OK, so now you have defined these colors. You can see it here in the preview. Nice, super nice. Um, now you you want to yeah to apply this and you can export it as a PowerShell. So you already have here all the theme colors and then it's just one line of uh, PowerShell code. Add SPO team, then you add the theme with this uh, colors and then the new theme will be available here in in this list. So this one is super easy. Um, yeah, and it will be available for the whole tenant. You can also hide all the other teams themes and you can also apply it for several pages sites. OK, um, back to the slides. Um, I've added here some must have web parts. So um, when you build up a SharePoint site, it's very helpful to work with a quick links web part because this web part is just. Um, yeah, um, you can provide quick links to different sources to links to a SharePoint site, links to external portals, links to anything. And you also have different layouts here. So. These are three examples of the layouts of this quick links web part. You can just search for it and you will find it and you can then you can set it up. So it uh, really makes uh, sites and the site look nicer. Um, another web part is also the picture web part. This is also very nice. So you can use this picture web part and also uh, make linking on the pictures. So you can use this one to just link to some pages or something else. Um, and then the news web part, um, the news web part is just showing you news and here you also have different layouts so you can work a little bit with the different layouts. You can de define your own yeah, pictures for the news and yeah, this makes it look nice. OK, um, so next also important topic is the organization assets library. So. Um, when you start, start building up SharePoint sites, um, you will have a lot of pictures and most of the time you use the same same pictures. Maybe you also have in your um, corporate identity, you have a um, you have a document where you have some pictures that are available in your company. So you can define an organization assets library, which is always available. You can see it also here in the screenshot. 
Um, so as soon as you add a picture anywhere in a SharePoint site, in a SharePoint page, um, you will be able to um, choose from uh, the pictures from your organization. And this is available to, to the whole company. So yeah, it makes sense to use it because then you can define some yeah, pictures um, and icons from in your company um, and everyone is able to use it. So this also prevents a little bit to um, having people downloading some pictures they shouldn't use from the web. Um, you can also define um, an office template organization assets library. That's also nice if you're using um, the office, uh, the new office applications in, from Microsoft 365. Uh, you can also um, have some office templates that will be available as soon as you office your open your office programs. Um, you can do this uh, setting the org assets library um, by PowerShell. It's just one com commandlet. Um, and it's also very important uh, after, you, after you define it to grant access to all users in your company. OK, um, so now um, I want to talk a little bit about hub sites, home sites and Viva connections, because it's also very important um, to, to understand why they, what they are and why they are important when we customize the UI. So, um, Maybe just a short overview of the hub sites. So hub sites in SharePoint help you organize your intranet and brings together rela related sites. Um, either um, a team site or a communication site, both of them could, could be a hub site. So you have to define them as a hub site. This is done not by the user, it's done in the admin center. And uh, yeah, the hub site brings together different content. Um, and if you then you have the hub site, you can imagine it's like if you imagine a hierarchy, yeah, the hub site is on the top, but it's not really a hierarchy. It just helps you to um, um, have a one navigation, to have the same color theme, to have the same search scope. And um, regarding UI, for us, it's important that if we define one site as a hub site, then all other sites that are associated to this site will get the same navigation and the same theme. Um, OK, now it gets a little bit more complicated because we also have the SharePoint home site. And the home site, it's not the home um, hub site. The home site is a communication site. It always needs to be a communication site with superpowers. Normally, it's your intranet homepage. So that's the typical use case. The home site is the intranet homepage. And um, it helps us later if we want to integrate this in Teams. It helps us also because if we define a home site, for example, your intranet home site, this will be the start, the starting point in your mobile SharePoint app. And uh, you also have an enterprise search functionality um, in this home site. It's also um, the home site is set with by PowerShell and you only have one home site in uh, your Microsoft 365 tenant. So now, um, now let's say that we have defined the home site. It's our intranet homepage, if you still have an intranet. Um, and now we also have Viva connections. So I don't want to talk today about Microsoft Viva because Viva, Viva has a uh, four parts, but Viva Connections is here very important for us because um, with Viva Connections, you can get your home site, so your intranet start page, directly in Microsoft Teams. In the past, you were also able to do this, but it was a little bit more complicated. Um, I have here also in the slides a reference to the Microsoft uh, website, and there there is a solution. You have to import it. Um, you also need to import it in the Teams App Store, and then you can just integrate your internet landing page directly in Teams. That's the nice thing about having a home site and using Viva Connections. And this one, uh, you don't have to, to pay anything in addition, so um, you can just go on this site and download it and yeah, install it in your tenant. 
Um, OK, so another thing we also have also with Viva Connections. This one is not in Teams, it's just in SharePoint. Um, we can see it also here. So let's see, let's just save the page again. And so it's this navigation here on the left side. Um, so the SharePoint app part, this is um, just new in SharePoint. And here you can define the global navigation. So that's the navigation you can define if it's a home, it's the navigation from the home side or the navigation from the hub side. You also can see here your favorite sites, your um, relevant news and files. So it just um, gives you a better way to get an overview in the whole SharePoint ecosystem. Um, OK, so you can set the, you can set up this also in um, with the global navigation option that is available in the settings. OK, just one more overview because we talked now a little bit about um, hub sites, home sites, just one more short wrap up. So a SharePoint site collection is always either a team site or a communication site. Every site can be set as a hub site. Some companies have only one hub site. Some companies have 20 hub sites. And only one site can be set as the home site. Um, the um, image here uh, below shows, for example, the yellow ones are the hub sites. And I can define a hub site, for example, HR. And different sites, communication and team sites, that are associated to the hub site. So all the sites will get um, the same navigation and the same theme color. Um, so this site that I'm having here, it's not associated to any hub site um, and it's also not a hub site by itself. But what I can do here as a site collection administrator, I can say here, OK, site information. Let's just associate this site to a hub. I will say, OK, let's associate it to this hub named home. I just defined it. It's yeah, a couple of time ago. And then in the moment I will apply it. Now you can see the color with changes. So the color changes. It's the theme from the associated hub site. And I'm also having here the additional navigation of the home site. Um, this is so this is my home site. It's the corporate portal. I'm just having it, having it here. And um, this is, let's say, the master uh, hub site. Sorry, not home site, hub site. OK. Um, Good, let's switch to the next topic. I'll have to keep an eye on it because we still have a couple of minutes. Um, list and library formatting. So if you work with lists and also libraries in SharePoint Online, you can um, format them with view and column formatting. You, you need to use JSON code and then you can format your lists. Um, it's You also have some default formatting options you can do directly um, in the settings, but you can also take a look on GitHub because there are a lot of um, samples available. Here are some examples. You can, this. Uh, so this all are just simple SharePoint lists or Microsoft lists um, that are using JSON for, um, for the column and view formatting. And uh, yeah, you can see here that um, you can build it up in different layouts. OK, so last but not least, um, we have some useful um, tools and extensions. I want to just uh, recommend them to you. Um, first, we have the SharePoint design website. So here you can find some SharePoint design principles you, you, you need to take care of. You can find some best practices and you will also find the link to the SharePoint lookbook. And I really recommend it to you because it's um, really very helpful. I've opened it here also. So um, you can see here 
Um, there are different examples and you can just take a look on these examples, but you can also deploy them directly to your tenant. It makes sense to deploy it on a test tenant to just check it out. Uh, sometimes these sites are deploying web parts, also new web parts, or they just deploy the whole content that you can see here in the preview. And it's just uh, yeah, a good uh, source for inspiration. OK, um, one more thing regarding recommendations. The PNP Modern Search Solution, it's a solution from the community. Um, you can compare it with the good old content search web part from SharePoint, uh, from the classic SharePoint. Um, and this solution includes four web parts. So you can build your own search results. You can design and lay out them as you need. Um, and yeah, it's yeah. You can take a look on it, and it's re it's really helpful. So you can find also on the website some examples. And um, as soon as you work with lots of information, uh, it can really be helpful. Okay. So um, also um, take a look on the Microsoft 365 roadmap because you can find there always the latest updates in SharePoint and all other and Microsoft 365. Um, applications and yeah, you can see there when new features will be available when they are rolling out and stuff like this. So let's make a short uh, recap because we are uh, running out of time. Um, so uh, use your custom themes um, to define your company identity, apply them for all the sites. Um, if you're working with sub hub sites, remember they bring together related sites and offer you a consistent design. Um, if you need to extend the customization, so you need to extend everything what you have out of the box, you can do it by using SharePoint framework solutions. Um, so I will always, I would always try to do as much as I can out of the box and if you need it, then you can. Uh, you can build your own solutions with SharePoint Framework. And Microsoft offers you a lot of support. You only need to know where to find it and yeah, to how to use it. OK, so um, I've also added the resources in the slides. And um, yeah, first of all, I want to say thank you for attending the session. Um, you, if you still have any questions, you can also um, contact me on the different uh, social media platforms. And now I will take a look in the chat because um, I'm just wanna wanna see if there are any questions. Um, Stephanie is asking. I'm wondering how to start from uh, scratch. The pages look gorgeous, but our current internet is very basic and boring. No photos. I'm not sure how to start. So I can recommend you the best way to start is the SharePoint lookbook because it gives you a lot of inspiration. So if you have a test tenant, just get some um, solutions. Uh, just take a look on the solutions and then you can add them to the tenant in a test tenant and just uh, test it out because it, it um, provides you the pictures, the content, the web part. So it provides you everything you see here in the preview and it's always a good inspiration. And after that, you can also go here and say, OK, um, it's nice what they've done here. Let's see. OK, they have they, they have used this web part so you can also see which uh, web parts and contents were used and included. Um, so that's the way I'm doing it. Um, so I've started doing it now. As soon as you work a little bit more with it, uh, it's easier. And um, yeah, it's also very important to um, to have some content that you that you want to add, and then try to start to be creative by using pictures and. Um, also, another thing what I'm always using is, for example, if you add a web part to a page, um, let's say the image web part. So for every web part, you always have here the stock images and 
um, the stock images are directly from Microsoft and um, it's really helpful. So in the web search, sometimes it's a little bit tricky because if you if you take something from the web, you have to check if it's creative common and stuff like this. Um, but if you use the stock images, so these are from Microsoft and you can just use them and yeah, just um, scroll a little bit and search for some nice pictures that you can use. So now I've just added a picture here directly in the page. Okay. Um, okay, I think I don't see any questions? Ah, here is another question. Can you define different themes uh, when communication sites are connected to the same hub? <laughs> Good question. So now I'm connected to a hub yeah, with this site. And now if I go here to um, change for changing the look and the theme, it says your site is connected to the home hub site and is set to automatically adopt the same theme. Yes, it can be changed. Um, so you, it can be changed also to not adopt the same theme. But as I remember, you have to do this in the admin center. So in the SharePoint administration of the hub site, you can define that associated sites don't inherit the same theme. So yeah, this was a requirement and it was updated. Okay. So I think there at the beginning there were just comments and I will take a look at the end. OK, one more question is here. Um, how do I add a link to a picture? Uh, let me just show it to you. So if you have um, a picture here, so you can go in editing um, the picture and here um, you, you can add a link. So always when you work with web parts, for every web part you have this editing icon uh, where you can go to um, the settings of the web part. And that's also with the picture, so you can add here the link and you can also add a text over. So you can add it here. This is a nice pick, let's say. You can also uh, crop the pictures if you want. Um, that's also uh, pretty nice. Sometimes it takes a little bit, but you can crop them. Now, I just save it. So now it was cropped. It should also adapt. I think it just takes a little bit. Okay. I think there are not no more questions in the chat, so I cannot see anymore. If you still have a question, so oops, I've op opened a chat. I didn't want to do that. Um, so if you still have any, any questions, um, ask them now. And yeah, if not, um, I think we're done with the session. One more thing, um, please uh, rate uh, my, my session. Um, and rate also the other session. It has also us for improvement and uh, to get better in the work we're doing. Um, yeah, and join our keynotes at uh, 19 CET or 7 CET. Okay, then thank you. And yeah, have a great day and uh, great sessions. <laughs>